Hey, Katie. Hey, Matt. I've got a quick yay or nay for you. Ready? Yep. Requiring system info when submitting support tickets. Yay or nay? Nay. What about I, you? I think I'm a yay. I think I'm, I'm going to say yay. Just, just, just so we're different, I guess. I don't know. It's a tough one. <laughs> but why, do you, why are you a nay? Because you worded it as an absolute, there are many types yeah. of support tickets like pre-sales. Obviously, I have to say nay because it would be ridiculous true, to true, request true. that for pre-sales. But even post-sales, you've got account queries, refund queries, product knowledge queries where you don't need to know about their environment. So really, you need to, uh, what we do is we use gravity forms to really narrow it down with yeah. conditional logic. And then only if they say, I have got a problem with the plugin that I need technical support with, do we then, yay, require their system info. Okay. So then you're saying when you have it narrowed down and you know with certainty that it is a technical support ticket, then you are, yay, yeah. require the, so the system info. Yeah. In those circumstances only. Yeah. So the, the art then is then being able to ensure that that's really what's going on. Yeah. So yeah. I've given a great argument for nay. <laughs> Justify your yay. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I maybe the way I worded it is not the best, but I do think it's like it's about it's about when they're submitting support tickets, um, and um, there are there's there's back and forth about like when they're submitting support tickets, they're frustrated, you know, um, and they just want to get answers quickly. And the more fields you put in your support form, the longer it takes for them to just even submit the thing so it could go lots of different ways but my biggest yay is when i know with certainty it's a support ticket and i want them to give us their system info because that sets up the technician to have the best actionable information to give them the best first response possible that's i'm like even if they're saying i don't understand this setting um like just give me everything you got so that i know with certainty i can get you as close to resolution in one reply as possible. That's why I'm like, I would hate to, to have the conversation start really simple and then down the road end up finding out that, oh, I actually really need your system info and that just takes another interaction and just makes everything take longer. Um, like, it's just easier, better. Give us, give us everything you got up front and then it'll be better. Um, it sounds like we're pretty similar, but... Yeah, I think we agree, really. It's just how you interpret the question. Yeah, yeah. And I think that the caveat of like how you ask it and, and making sure that you know with certainty that, you're, that, you're, that they are submitting the support ticket, that, that's all a lot of the important nuance in the, in the subject. But we did do a poll on this uh, to set up the conversation here. Um, and you know what? It was really interesting. Um, they... We do have the majority of people saying that they think the system info should be optional. So, and maybe it has something to do with the way I asked the question, but I said, what would happen if you required every support ticket submission to include the site health or system info? Um, I've never required it, which is true. We haven't actually required it to date. And yet so many people still provide it like just because we ask for it. Um, but I'm very tempted to require it to improve the quality of our first responses. Um, and this is a little bit of what folks said. Um, Robert DeVore says, I voted optional because not every ticket will require that much info for you to recognize and provide a fix for the problem. So if it was a required step, that would put unnecessary burden on the customer. I think that's really the, the heart of the nay response, right? Like putting too much burden on the customer. What, what, what's your take on that? Uh, does adding it get put too much burden on them well think about when you submit support tickets on other plugins and themes it's a pain does your heart sink when it says <laughs> system support system status because mine does especially if it's something that doesn't make that very easy to find and there's tons of links you've got to click to get it and, and you've got to upload a file or whatever so um as a customer, I would rather only do it if it was really relevant to my problem, which often it doesn't feel. Yeah, absolutely. I've been in circumstances where it wasn't required. And like, I'm like, I run technical support teams. I know how to submit a support ticket. And so I'd 
I don't provide the system info because I don't think it's necessary. And then my first response I get is, hey, can you send me your system info? Mm. Um, I'm like, I would have if I thought it was necessary. Uh, Just help me out anyway. But Uh, also, you know that you're not using a really outdated version of PHP or something, which is often what we get when we receive the system info. You yeah. kind of know that, but the person you're sending the information to doesn't know, do they? Yep, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's part of the kicker. Uh, I responded to Robert. I said, sometimes the initial inquiry makes it seem like it's not necessary. Then you dig in and things get complicated later and you know, end up having to ask for it anyway. And that that's where I'm leaning. It's like, it might seem innocent and simple, and then all of a sudden it's not. And it's just a pain to have to circle back and ask later. Um, Kim Coleman uh, from Paid Memberships Pro, I put it as optional, but I would say required if you also add a drop down for type of issue. And this only appears if the issue type is bug, plug in conflict. This sounds like pretty much exactly what you're saying, right? It is. That's what we do. Yeah. yeah. It is required if you've ticked those boxes. Yeah. Nice. Um, do it for their own good. <laughs> That's I think that's straight and simple to the point. Hashim is great. Volva says you use Freemius and then you get customer system info automatically right. In- yeah, 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 yeah. I How think convenient. that is. A- yes. Um, I mean, it is nice when it, you have it baked into the whole system. Um, I have thought of, I think I'm trying to I think Yoast does it where you can submit support through your WordPress admin to them. And I think that way they get it automatically. I think it was Yoast. I've seen a couple of plugins do that. I think that's pretty smart. What's your take on that? That's really good if you make it seamless. I like the main disadvantage we've talked about from the customer's perspective is that hurdle that they've got to do extra work. So if you remove that extra work, then there's no reason whatsoever. In fact, the question goes away because it's not, is it required or not? It it happens automatically, which yeah. is great. Yeah, it's just Unfortunately, there. some of us use things like EDD and it's not that easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You definitely could like embed like the help scout beacon into your plugin in one way or another, um, which then you could pass stuff that way. It takes some, takes some heavy lifting to make it all work that way. Um, But it's an interesting take. Uh, Spencer um, says the best thing you could do is add a support beacon. Well, there we go. That's what we were just saying. (laughs) Uh, In our case, we use help scout and we add the support beacon in our feed. Uh, in the Feed Them Social plugin, uh, Spencer and his brother are the authors of that plugin. Uh, it's displayed in the bottom right corner of the custom post type. Anytime you have an issue, they open the beacon. It tells the problem. So it's included with the support ticket. No muss, no fuss. I think that's pretty smart. I really like that. Yeah. And also be- beacons can have documentation as either the first or the second tab. So it's not just going to put extra load on your support team to make it that easy for people to contact you. Um, Absolutely, they yeah. can do search documentation within the admin. Yeah, the help scout beacon is really powerful overall. Um, that's a great option. Katie Keith chimed in, um, and this is pretty much what you were saying earlier, right? Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> like between then and now, I've changed. It was my like mind. three weeks ago. I forgot. <laughs> Um, Derek says, as a plugin owner, I do require it. As someone submitting tickets, that's exactly what you were saying earlier. Mm. Like, as a customer, I hate it. As a plugin author, I have to require it. Um, yeah, and uh, AJ here, optional for me, would usually go there in the second response. Ah, that's exactly what I don't. I have to say, I have to really disagree with AJ on this one. Like, I do not want to do a follow-up asking for uh, system info. Uh, I just, I just think it adds noise. It adds too much uh, interactions. Like we're trying to do as few interactions as possible to get people to resolution as quickly as possible. That's um, true. But I'd be interested to know. I don't suppose anyone's got this data. What p- proportion of tickets you can just give your gut response without needing all that stuff from the customer to say, "Oh, what you're saying sounds is normally a caching issue. Why don't you check this?" Yeah. Because you're using your experience and instinct, and then maybe they go away and don't come back. So it would be interesting to know how many you can solve on your gut and how many do require that information. Yeah. Typically, I always say if you can respond, if you can resolve it in one response, then that answer belongs in your documentation. Um, but that's not to say that everybody reads the documentation either. So. Again, mm-hmm. I guess that's another vote for having the Help Scout beacon in your plugin or whatnot, so they can actually get it in docs first and then submit a ticket. 
Yeah, and Taco here from Yoast is saying, I'm afraid it would be too much of a barrier for many customers to require it for every support request. That is my gut too. I hate requiring it. I hate adding friction to these things, but I've been really surprised on the give side and even as I'm learning on the learn dash side, on the event calendar side, that uh, even when it's optional, people really are providing it more than 50% of the time. I've been really surprised. But I think that in some ways is like, our ability to train our customers to to be providing it and the way in which these plugins also surface the system info in their own way that makes it really easy to just click a button and, cop it, and it's copied to your clipboard and you can paste it in really easily. Tanner says, definitely optional. Don't add a burden requiring it as something they're not willing to share right off the bat. The priority is fixing their issue and that's not possible without site. If that's not po possible without site health, you can always reach out and ask. Yeah, yeah. The priority is fixing their issue. And that's exactly why I'm saying I need their site help. Because I can fix it. You're contradicting yourself. Because you're saying it's not required. And then you keep saying, we need it, we need it. We need to solve in the first response. I'm on the, I'm on the fence. I'm on, we have not mm. been requiring it. And I'm thinking I need to require it. That's, that's, yeah. that's why I set up the poll in the first place. You're clearly uh, a big advocate of it. Yeah, I, have, I think I've become, I'm warmed up to it. And which is interesting because if I take the majority here, they're really saying optional. They're doing what I'm doing. Um, but you are making it required. But I love the way in which it's conditionally required. Um, you know, that's the thing that wasn't an option. And so people <laughs> are saying optional because they mean in some circumstances and not others, possibly. They might possibly. not mean it's literally optional. Yeah, I think that's why this. Forcing ourselves to say yay or nay is fun for video content, but we know that the answer is always like nuanced. It depends. Yeah. But we got lots of responses here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but let's uh, just check these last ones. Steve Jones says, we require it for our premium plugins and have never had pushback. Free plugins, we push all support requests to .org where it's not required. That's true. That's a good point. On .org, you can't really require it. You can always ask for it, but then you're asking them to paste relatively sensitive information mm. um, into a public forum. So you really don't want to do it there. Um, John Brown is a good old friend of mine from Southern California, and um, he loves to um, have some strong opinions about things. Most of the time, it's totally unnecessary, and it's annoying AF to be required. <laughs> I was wondering how you were going to read that out. <laughs> <laughs> I read it just like you wrote it, so... I just want to ask how to do something because your docs are terrible. Your docs suck. Don't make me go copy and paste a whole bunch of crap. Just ask a question. He's like definitely advocating from the customer perspective here, uh, loud and clear. Like, and that is, I think that's part of a, the big consideration here. So do you get, you, because you make it conditionally required under the exact right circumstances it's required, do you get pushback from folks saying, why in the world do you require me to do this? Um, have, have no, you gotten I don't back? think so. No, mm. because it's only when they get to that point through the gravity forms logic. But his last sentence, don't auto reply asking I send it without reading it. Now, PayPal do that. And that really annoys me. They will always send a really long and detailed robotic response. And you have to like reply. I'm normally replying in all caps at this point saying, please read my thing. It does not answer my question. <laughs> so yeah, that's really annoying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I guess at the bottom line is that how to be able to resolve the question as quickly as possible with the right information without annoying the customer. That's the magic right there. If there's any way that we can do that, it's the best. So like in an ideal circumstance, I think we're talking about doing the whole like embedded support beacon kind of situation because then you get it and the customer doesn't have to do any effort at all. I love that. It's Absolutely, yeah. So the freemius model, awesome custom development on your part because then there's just no reason not to get it because there is no friction. Exactly. Yeah, it's really making me rethink the whole situation where maybe rather than being super smart about our support form on the website, we really should just leapfrog into doing a, a embedded support form in the plugins. That just feels probably better. But I'm always nervous about that because it feels like it will just like dramatically increase the volume of tickets. Yeah. Learn Dash has some cool stuff um, with like yeah. uh, documentation search and things like that within the admin. I don't know if they've got support forms though. 
Yeah, I'm learning these things as I've been helping out on their customer experience side of things at LearnDash more and more. They have said anecdotally that when they embedded the docs into the plugin, that it did reduce support tickets. So I think that's an encouraging trend. I want to dig into the data, of course, and find that out more objectively. I think it's interesting for sure. We are also moving more and more towards trying to surface chatbots that are powered by our online documentation with the intention that we're going to be monitoring the responses, that people know they're interacting with a bot that might not be correct, that they can always reach out to a real person if the bot's not accurate. But all of that still depends on having really strong documentation that is accurate and being able to train the bot to be correct. I'd really like to see that thrive this calendar year on the stellar side of things. But will that actually increase our customers' experience with support or will it just be another burden? I'm not sure. We'll have to find out. Can you think of any time that you've talked to a chatbot on a service you're interested in or using and it providing value to you as the customer? I haven't seen it on the products that I use so much to date. Um, like when banks I, and things, every they've all the bigger organizations mm, have them. Yeah, those are, to me, I don't know that the ones that I've seen that do that aren't really like these AI bots. They're more of just mm. like really complex automations, more or less, like choose your own adventure types, you know, like is your yeah. question X or Y or Z? And if you choose one of them, it gives you the answer. Um, and that's those aren't super intelligent, um, but it's a very catered way to get your response. Um, and you know that it's going to be accurate every time. But if they don't cover all of your questions, then you're kind of stuck. But I have experimented a ton with how DocSpot AI from Aaron Edwards, who we had on the show before, how it is working with our GiveWP online documentation and the answers that it's providing. I'll say I'll give it a 90% or maybe 88%. Between 88 and mm -hmm. 90%, it's helpful information. And I know that if we spend more time training it to not give the wrong answers, that, that 10%, that it'll improve. But it's all about having the capacity and spending that time um, to make it improve. So, um, What's the success rate on the real people in the Give team? So if um, the actual support engineers are doing live chat, their success rate probably oh, isn't yeah. 100. So when you say 90%, what is that compared to a real person? Yeah, no, 90% 90 per, 90 correct answers from the chat bot. Yeah. Um, but we're not providing technical support via chats yet. Um, okay. We're doing chat, live chat mostly just for pre sales questions, generally mm. speaking. But the events calendar in particular does live chat for, um, it is for pre sales purposes, but they do get a lot of support questions there as well. And mm. their happiness ratings in live chat are very high. Um, people tend to really like the support they get and the answers they get in live chat. So, um, it's it's a good one. I just, I do feel like, I don't know, there's still some things I got to beat up there in terms of the benefits of can an AI chat bot reduce the number of support tickets that the people get? Because that's the, that's the hope. That's the dream that we'll just get. It'll be a good first interaction that will prevent new tickets from being created um, mm -hmm. versus just having the humans spend the time um, and and have that be high quality time. Um, it's hard to say what's best there. We kind yeah. of meandered in this uh, in this episode, which is fun. We're well off topic. This is nothing to do with <laughs> system status report. Uh, I think we can probably talk about uh, customer support. I could talk about customer support for forever. Um, but anybody who's a, a business owner like yourself, Katie, I think is always passionate about helping their customers. So mm. good subject. So tell us in the comment. Um, Yay or nay, what's your take on System Info? Um, and uh, Katie, thanks so much. Yeah, bye. Bye.